guess we're going to get started. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Cleo Vicki Blackston, and I am the Associate Director of Housing and Residential Program. The person you've been waiting to speak to all day, right? <laughs> I'm having a hard time here. Is the door open? I'm sorry, you can't hear me? It's the door. Keep oh, it's the door. Okay. And we'll have the door shut there for a moment to block some of the noise from outside. I have a very short PowerPoint to show you. Lots of times to answer, to answer your questions that you may ask. I look at your faces right now and I see at least 15 questions. They're going to come my way all one time. I just know it. So we'll get started. Okay, let's talk about my job and what I do here, and that's supervising the residence halls. Um, in the coming year, we will have 11 residence halls, and we have 2,622 students on campus. All of them here eager to learn. All of them here ready to be adults. Well, sometimes. <laughs> we have residence halls on the north side of campus. This is the south side of campus where we're at now. We work closely with student logic. Um, and I'll explain a little more about that later on. And for a virtual tour of the halls, you can go to our, our MU homepage and as follow the instructions here, and you'll be able to uh, go to the housing website and click on the tour of the halls if you'd like to see more in depth. And let's talk about the staff. Each floor has a resident assistant. That is a student that is hired by the Department of Housing and their job is to help your student with the transition to college, to be a resource person, to be there for them when their blinds fall down and they need to put back up, to be there to remind it where the bursar's office is, where the financial aid office is. They're there to talk about their own experiences of how they manage to get adjusted from going to high school and being at home to being on their own to help show them the way. I must say I am extremely proud of our RAs. I'm sure a lot of you have gotten to know the orientation leader. That's the caliber of students that we have in our halls. And they're great. And they are there to help. They are there to serve. We have in our um, halls also we have graduate assistants. And in one hall, the Shanks and Rikers Hall next year, we will have resident hall director, that would be a full-time person. In the other halls, there's a graduate assistant who, for the most part, is usually in the counseling or psych department. They um, are supervised by two area coordinators, those full-time professional people, and I get to supervise a whole bunch of them. <laughs> That's good times on most days, actually, though. All of our halls, and I won't go down the list exactly in line, so pardon me. But all of our halls are card access to get into. The students have a swipe that has their picture on it and their MU number on it, and it will only access their hall, no one else's. That's the same card that they use for meals and use the library and to use the laundry facilities if they choose to. We have cameras in the hallways. No, we do not have cameras in the bedrooms or in the bathrooms. Just a whole lot. <laughs> or if we need them. I'd like to stop just for a second here. We have a fire suppression system, which means sprinklers. <clears throat> and you might say, well, why is she bringing that up? Stop it here at this point. I'll tell you why. Because last year in one of our halls, in the fall, there was a student who for some reason thought that it would be a perfect place to hang some clothes off of the sprinkler pad, right? Because it's up there. I want my shirt to dry, I want my jeans to dry. And they hung their clothes on it. Can anybody tell everybody else what happened? <laughs> Not only did they get wet, the entire floor got wet. We had to re-carpet an entire hallway. Hallways and student rooms. So, I'm going to ask you to do several favors for me throughout the course of when we're talking in preparation for your student to get here. Here's the first favor I'm going to ask. Please tell them not to hang things off of the sprinkler heads. <laughs> we have text messaging, 
which students can, uh, parents can sign up for. I think someone has already talked to you perhaps about that. Okay. And students need their ID at all times to enter their halls. Also on their <coughs> ID, there is a little dot that has, it's color coded for a particular building. So when they enter the hall, the person that's sitting at the front desk is going to say, may I see your ID? So that they're sure that person belongs in that hall. Okay, we have living and learning communities within our residence halls. Most of those are decided by, um, by the um, associate provost, and the success program, and the registrar's office. Now you'll ask, what does that exactly mean? I'll give an example. In one of our halls, we have students that say are undecided. So you've got two classes of students that are undecided, that will take classes together. They will be assigned peer mentors, which are also staff in our buildings. And that peer mentor is on the floor for academic reasons, the same way the RA is there on the floor for the normal day-to-day -day living. They'll be assigned to a freshman year experience class. A peer mentor will be assigned. They do things like journaling. Um, they take classes together. They have outside studying. They do community service projects and things like that together to help get them oriented to the university and perhaps find out exactly where they need to belong if they haven't decided when they walked in the door about what their major is going to be. And then we have some communities where students have decided that they're going to be music majors or bio majors and they live um, in a group together. <coughs> okay, let's talk about Boyer's concept of community. Bottom line, community is a word that you would hear a lot when you're talking housing because it is a community. Just the same as the houses on the other side of you and the people that you live around. That's kind of the way we look at our residence halls as a community living. And we want all of our students to be good community members, the same way that you don't want your neighbors blaring their stereo at 2 o'clock in the morning or parking their car in your garage, in your car spot. We kind of go on the same lines of that with our students that we want everybody here to be able to study, to be able to enjoy themselves, and to be able to grow. So a lot of emphasis is put on the students working with each other, that if it is a noise problem, it's our expectation that the RA will call the entire floor together. And as a community, they work on that to figure out the best way to deal with it. So as I said, you will hear community a lot, and we do consider it a community, and for our students to learn to live within a community as they will do when they go out and graduate. I have up here campus activities. Get connected to the campus. Why? Well, studies show that students who do get connected to the campus and involved and know their professors and their advisors do well. They do well, and their graduation rate is consistent and better. So part of our job in the halls, as I said, we help students adjust. Some of the things that we do are programs on the floors. We may have a program on decision making. We may have a program on how to wash clothes, because a lot of students come to school and don't know how to wash clothes yet. We may have a program on anything, any topic that's in the news that's there for them to think about. We will also encourage them to go to programs. We have a cultural affairs calendar. There are tons of activities for students to do here. If your student says, I'm bored, there's nothing to do, something's wrong, call me. I will get them hooked up into something. <laughs> the housing department, I'll talk about student staff position in a minute. But the housing department has getaway weekends on September the 13th to the 15th and 20th to the 22nd this year. Getaway weekend is a leadership weekend. I cannot tell you the difference I see in students that board that bus on Friday afternoon who are dragging like we're taking them to the gallows. And when they come back on Sunday, energized, charged, and revved and ready to go. 
It truly is a transformative weekend that they do there. And if you have a student that hasn't really been involved in high school, that you think this might be a good way for them to start that process, that leadership process, that encourage them to go. <coughs> we will send emails and um, letters out to you later this summer about reminders for getaway weekends. They are very good. <coughs> now, within the housing department, I have 83 RAs. I have approximately 20 peer mentors. 16 program assistants and several other types of jobs, which means I hire a lot of students, <laughs> a lot of students. Um, that leadership program I talked about, a lot of the students that I hired to be RAs or peer mentors went to that because that starts the process for them understanding who they are in relationship to other people, how to work with other people, and bringing out some of their leadership potential that perhaps they've been hiding under a rock. So I always encourage parents, you out there, that if you think that you've got a student that is going to be a great leader, that after their first semester here, that I'm going to look into the RA position because um, I think an RA position is a pretty good job considering the fact that we pay for their parking ticket. They can pay for 50 hours every two weeks. And there is a room to, and there is a price reduction for their room. <coughs> Plus the other perks that they give them um, for being a part of the housing department employee pro employment program. When you're looking for students on committees, I'm tapped constantly. Who do you have that could be on this search committee for a vice president? Who do you have that could be on this search committee? We're looking for someone that's going to be head, heading IT. So we do a lot of hiring. We do a lot of good for our students. They do need to take advantage and they do need to get involved. Um, I talked about the community concept. We have a living on campus. And a living on campus, it will be online. It's kind of like the students write what it is. It writes privileges and all those other kinds of things that go along in with that. Here's the second thing I'm going to ask you to do for me, please. Please encourage your student to read the living on campus. It has all the rules and regulations in it. Well, at least all the rules and regulations that we've thought of so far. Because next year there'll be a new edition, and I'm sure some of your students might bring something to us that we never had before, and we'll have a new edition now. But so far, it has all the things that we can think of as far as students' rights or responsibilities to be in there. So they should be familiar with that. We ask the students to sign up their MU email address. That's the way we communicate with them. We do not go out to flippybunny17.org and send things. <laughs> we can't do that. And I know people spend a lot of time coming up with those names. They have to. Some of them, I blush. But <laughs> we can't do that. <laughs> we have to use their Marauder email. So please, number three, encourage them to check their email daily. This is the way, hear this one clear, parent. This is the way they're going to find out when their housing deposit is due for the next year. This is the way they're going to find out that it is time to sign up for a new room next semester or next year. So if your son, daughter, student, you know, grandchild, whoever it is says, well, I don't know how to sign up for a room. That time has passed. You can tell them, you didn't check your email, did you? Because I know that's the way they're communicating with you. Now, as I talked about community and how in an outside community we expect students to be able to live together, we expect students to try to solve their own problems. With the help of the RAs, the GAs, the area coordinators, and myself. So they're not totally left alone to do this. So if your student calls you and says, my roommate keeps coming in the room at 3 o'clock in the morning and, and eating my food and wore my jeans and she just won't stop it. Nobody's done anything about it. <coughs> Instead of getting all charged up and ready to get into the car, 
Here's what I want you to ask them first. Have you spoken to and told your RA what is going on? Because that's going to be the first step in the resolution of the problem. If they have tried in good faith to deal with their roommate, then the RA is going to come in and mediate. And parents, please remember, there's two sides to every story. So they really do need to talk to their roommate. They need to go to their RA to ask for help. We have what you call um, a roommate agreement form. And it's a trifold. And it's got so many questions that the students can answer to figure out how they, you know, they, there are things on there like, what time do you want to study? How loud should the music be? Can I borrow your shoes? Can I borrow your jacket? You know, am I, do you um, mind if I have a, a friend over? And we encourage the students to fill that out. Once again, developing a sense of community and learning how to live together, that they have that open communication about. Okay. Um, because of FERPA and other privacy things, I can't call you and tell you, or you can't call me and have me tell you what is going on with your student. I can't. I can listen to you, and I will then go back and go right back to the student in the RA of the floor. So I can listen, and then I can go do some investigation. But I can't speak to you about what is going on, your student's discipline record at all, with the exception of one thing. If your student is caught in a violation of alcohol, we do let you know that. That is a letter that will come home to you. Now, as I said, I can't call you. Normally, I can't call you. I can't speak to you if you call me. But that doesn't mean if a problem's going on, you say to your student, I want you to go see Vicki. And I want you, while you're in Vicki's office, to call me. So that you'll be giving Vicki permission to talk about what's going on. I'm more than willing. I love that. <laughs> I love that opportunity. I do. I love it. It may seem wrong with me, I'll tell you why. I had a grandmother last year in the fall who called me. And she called me extremely upset. One of those situations where the roommate, as I gave that example, was eating the food. Everybody was in the room past time that they should have been. Um, there were words between the students. And um, the grandmother called the staff. The staff tried to remedy the problem by bringing the student in. The grandmother called. This went on for about a week. Finally, um, around about 9 o'clock one night, because the staff called me because the grandmother was extremely upset. They didn't know what else to do. I went up to the campus, and I called the young lady in and brought her into my office. And I said, we're calling your grandmother. And we're going to discuss this problem on the phone. So I called her grandmother. I said, would you please tell your grandmother what the problem is? Well, I already just tell her so that I can hear her tell her the problem. Well, number one, the problem was different than the problem she told the grandmother. <laughs> okay. Number two, she had never talked to her roommate about what was going on. Number three, she actually was the one that instigated the name calling, not the roommate. That's why I said sometimes there's two sides to every story. And we'll help you ferret that, ferret that story out. <laughs> but I'll have to get the students to come in to give me permission to do that. It's not that I don't want to talk to you. I love talking to parents. It's just in that case, I can't. <laughs> but that is the way we get around it. I will call them in and have them call, and we will discuss the <coughs> okay. As I said, all students have email addresses, Marauder accounts that they must set up so that we can let them know what's going on. And I think housing's kind of important. Where am I going to live next semester? Am I going to be in a room, or am I going to be living in a field in a pup tent? Is that an option? What, a pup tent in a field? Well, you know, some days, I wish. <laughs> All of you should receive information. And has health services spoken to you already today? 
Okay, then I'm going to just move right across that. If you have not purchased computers or irons or things like that yet, we ask if you can that you get the ones with the Energy Star logo. That doesn't mean that we will not let you in the door if you don't have it. But we're just asking because as we try to grow green and be a little more responsible so and help. Excuse me? The rooms don't have refrigerators because most companies have them connected. And I'll get to that in a second. Um, but um, as we try to go green and, and do better with energy, those products are energy saving. But as I said, we will still allow them in. Okay, check in for new students Wednesday, August the 21st. And we have divided the alphabet up. We've done that because we're a, an entire massive group to descend on the campus. You'll be forever trying to get in. And you may or may not have noticed we have some construction going on. So we're trying to do this to make it easier for you. Now, if your last name is Z and you have three students that you need to drop off on the same day, are we going to make you wait until that time? No, we won't, you know, beat you out with a stick or put the torches or anything out. But if it's not an emergency, then we ask if you please abide by those check-in times. Assignment letters will be out mid-July. So in a few weeks, you'll be getting your assignment letters. Uh, for those of you, your students, if you please ask them, here's my next question that I have you asked for them to help me with. Ask them if they have gone online and signed a housing agreement. <coughs> If they have not, they need to do so. And as of yesterday, there were 235 freshmen that have not signed their housing agreement. So please check that for me if you would. Is that part of the... <coughs> I'm sorry? Is that part of the... Yes. Yes, they sign their housing agreement, and then normally they would go in to then pick which building they want to live in and their roommate that he's in the same area. I, my son, I believe, did that but he didn't sign it. I tried to go back and look to see what he did, but I couldn't get any information. Like, I wanted them to choose a traditional one. Well, it's, shut, it's closed at this point after they go in because we're assigning people to the halls already. So if they went in originally and they asked for a room and everything, they're fine and they're good. But we're at a point in the process now where we have shut it down so that they can't go back in. So can I call you guys online and ask you what you chose? Is that possible? He can call and ask. <laughs> 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 well, he signed that release authorization release for Well, we don't have one of those for housing, so, um, <laughs> so he can call back to housing. <laughs> Um, the housing agreement is different from anything else. If they had, um, if, you, if they fill an application in to come to the university and things like that, the housing agreement is separate. So, so he needs to go and sign that. Yeah, and we said yes, he needs to go and sign the, the housing agreement. And like well, I said, we we've got two hundred and something know, that have. Like if you fill out the application, that means you're already enrolled in it, or you already no. know. That's what I'm saying. For housing, you may have signed something for the university <coughs> as a whole. You may have signed things for financial aid, but the housing one is a separate agreement that they need to sign. So that, that, that would have been done maybe a month or so ago if you went in to request a certain form. Yes. Oh, definitely. So that would be going, we had to sign that. Well, some of them managed to get through and do not. Most of them haven't done anything, though. And we have had a little hiccup with once or twice where people came through and who signed up for a hall but did not sign the agreement. Okay. Now we get on to the, to the fun part, to the, can I bring this, can I bring that? No, iguanas can't come. You have to stay home. <laughs> They cannot come. Snakes can't come with them either. Puppies can't come. Cats can't come no matter how good a piano player they are, they cannot come. Goldfish can come. That's it. That's the stuff. Now, in all of our halls, there are kitchens downstairs that are fully stocked, fully equipped, stove, oven, 
microwaves, refrigerators, pots and pans. So yes, your student can cook, and please, here's my next, my next <laughs> thing that I ask you to help me with. Now, it's related to cooking, but a specific area. I get calls at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, midnight sometimes. Fire alarm's going off, the entire building is outside, it's 5 degrees, it's sleeting. Why are they outside? Anybody want to guess? There you go. <laughs> there you go. I don't know why it defies people's ability to put popcorn in a microwave and not have it burn the building, burn the floor, have a fire department come in. So there's my other help. Please, if you have not done so, teach your student how to microwave popcorn. <laughs> they won't be out there in the sleep and stuff either. <laughs> there is a clear list that, um, that information will be coming to you about micro fridges. That's the taller fridges that have the microwave attached. So normally, students will communicate with each other. They'll split the cost of ordering one. It will be in the room by the time they come. If two students, for whatever reason, decide that they want to order their own, they can do that too. We don't stop them. The room's only so big, and when you go on a tour, you'll see the most efficient um, use of space would be one, but sometimes there are two. Okay. Um, in all of our halls, there are laundry facilities. So they can wash and dry, they can use their ID, or they can use coin if they want to. There is a list. If you go to the housing website and click on frequently asked questions, there is a full list of things that they can and cannot bring. I'm just going to talk about a few. As I said, pets are not allowed. I know they're kind of cute and they've had them for the past 10 years, but they have to visit during break. Goldfish are allowed. And they need to be reminded to take those goldfish home at Christmas time. And I can't tell you how many poor little belly up things I've seen come January that they left those poor things. Here. They are not allowed to bring grills, be they gas, propane, or George Norman. Yes, we have had students who have done that. They bought grills. They thought that they could cook in the hall and it would be perfectly okay. It's not. They are not allowed to bring deep fryers. We don't want someone burn, including our room, our students' belongings. As I said, we have a fully stocked kitchen downstairs. They can bake cookies to their heart's content. And if they want to fry, whatever they want to fry, they can do it downstairs. It's safer for everybody else. Excuse me? Oh, they can bring coffee pots if they want to. Yeah, they can bring those. They can bring irons. And if you go on the website, you will see the ampage that's recommended for refrigerators and things like that there, too. Um, I don't think so. I don't think we have, I think that's on our van list. Like I said, the full list is on the website there. Because that's along the line of the, deep, the, the baby deep fryers that they had out a few years ago that everybody was getting. I had to march at the door away from had to march them back out with them. Um, candles are not allowed. Any way, shape, form, fashion, decorative, <coughs> Candles are not allowed. And another thing that's not allowed, some students, when they graduate from high school, and depending upon states or things that they come from, um, they get decorative champagne bottles, wine bottles, and put little bowls on Yeah, <laughs> And believe me, I've seen them. I'll come in. Alcohol is not allowed. That means alcohol paraphernalia is not allowed also. Um, let's see, other things that we have in the residence halls outside of good staff that's there to meet your student and help them in. Talked about laundry, talked about the kitchen. They will be able to study. Um, we do all of our halls, our air conditioned, no smoking allowed in the halls. Uh, all of our car, our, our halls are car access. Let's see, I'm trying to think. So the halls are air conditioned, but the rooms are air conditioned? Yes. Oh, okay. Yep. Rooms are air conditioned. Um, I think that's all that I wanted to run through to tell you. I'm going to open, and this lady right back here is going to get the first question from me now. So I'll open the floor to questions. The, the, the 
the sheets? Are they the long single beds or the regular single size sheets? We have a standard size for the sheets, and I'm going to refer you to our housing website. The measurements are there. Okay. The measurements for our windows, for the beds, for the sheets that you need to bring, all of it's on the website. And you know, for that, I'm giving you a I'm giving you a chance to win something back here. Here you go. That's a good question. Next. She answered my question. <laughs> oh, you've been to the second. There you go. I'm giving you one because you went to our side already. Right. What's your question? So my son is the number of Um, the RAs will be in training. We have certain students that come in for band, that come in for football, um, tetherball, <laughs> swimming, <laughs> um, mind sports, or whatever it is before the, <laughs> before the year starts. And for the most part, they are placed in a particular hall for that time of that camp. We consider that kind of a camp. Then on the 19th, or 18th or 19th, whatever that Sunday is, they will then be moved to their permanent hall. So if they come in a week before the regular students come in, they're going to have to move, unless they are lucky enough to be camped in the building that they're going to be in during the year. And in that case, we put them right in the room that they're going to be in during the year. Then he's going to go into his room. For the year. Comes in on, on the eighth on that Sunday, they'll be going straight into the room that they'll be in during the regular year. This lady back here. Um, in between the semester and the break, but in, at Christmas time, mm -hmm. uh, I had somebody in another school that said that they had to take everything out of their dorm because they were being they get cleaned. And I thought, no. well, that was a really ridiculous thing to have to happen. No, during break times, they do not have to take anything out of their room. We do suggest that people take their valuables home during Christmas time, that long break. But no, they can leave whatever they want in the room. Over Christmas time, we just ask them to unplug the refrigerators and clean them before they go. I like that question, so I'm giving you a Hey. <laughs> uh, this lady here, and then I'll get you. Cell phone coverage in mm -hmm. the rooms. Is it pretty good? Yeah, we have, wise? actually, we have um, cell phone things on top of Burroughs and, and um, Lenhart Hall. So yes, it's very good. And if the orientation guys up here hear me steering anybody wrong, jump in and let them know. Okay. <laughs> um, two questions. One is there, there is Wi-Fi in the rooms, right? Yes. And the second question, you had mentioned windows, about sizes of windows. Do they need to bring, like, curtains or, or We have blinds. If they want curtains, then it will be up to them to bring the curtains in that they want. But we do have blinds at all the windows. And the bathrooms, there's one. How do the bathrooms work in each floor? The bathrooms are like single the sex to the floor, and there are at least four shower stalls in all of the bathrooms. Um, uh, our shortest floor, our longest floor is probably 30. But believe me, they work it out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need to bring an Ethernet um, cord at yes. all? And like for the cable, yes. also for the TV? Yes, and we are cable ready in the rooms. Um, I'll be right back over that way. With the new construction of the new housing coming on site and the amount of freshmen you have coming in this year, is there going to be, you said 250 people haven't signed up agreement. Is there going to be enough housing? Oh, sure. There's enough room. We just want them to sign up. We're prepared for them. We're not letting them go. <laughs> <laughs> They're ours now. <laughs> yes. Now you're saying that the room is cable ready. Yes. Do you have to provide a supplier? No, it's already, everything is in. All they do is come in and they hook up the television. They hook it up and yeah. it works. So, yeah. oh, okay, so that's included. Yes. Okay. I like that question. In the tent, though? In the tent, too. Well, no, see, <laughs> in that tent, I have not found an extension cord long enough to work, and that's why they won't let me put a pump tent out there. Oh, but see, they were also told you don't want to be in the tent. No, you, you really don't. Like no, you don't? Yeah. Not really. Yeah. But you know what? I do what I have to do. <laughs> um, I get this lady right here from um, And I can't see it here either. Can you lower the light some so we can see the website here? But we, you will be getting information on that too. Can you see it? It's 
It's www.rhl.org slash M L R. I'm giving myself one. <laughs> If she pick, okay, here's the way living and learning works. As I said, we have several halls that are living and learning, that through the provost's office and different departments, they decide that they would like students to be there. So those halls, normally the students that go into those are the ones that have been picked to go there. And so if your student asked to go into hall and say they already knew that they were going to be a bio major, and they'd already declared it, um, they probably get their second option, as opposed to that first one. Probably. Is there a way to change it? Because she picked the science and math, and she's part of the research. So she's What I would tell her to do is to call the housing office on Monday and ask to speak to the housing coordinator and explain to her what has happened. That that would be our first step. Um, oops. Oh, you got oh, I'm sorry. 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 I'm
I know I'm listening to the fathers in the room. It's coming at me. It's just radiating off of me. Well, I don't want my daughter to have a male in the room. Well, if that's the case, then your daughter tells her roommate no. And it's as simple as that. It's a done deal. Simple as that. And it's the same way if, you're, if your student is a male and they do not want their male roommate to bring a girlfriend, a sister, or their mother over to stay, they simply say no. And we will honor that. But no one can have a, a guest more than three days in a row. They have to sign in when they come into the building, and they are responsible for that. You mentioned uh, the size of the beds for the women's mm -hmm. So our son is 6'4". And call the housing office and say, I have a tall son. <laughs> and we will say, we will look to see which room he's in, and we will get a mattress to fit his toes. <laughs> um, Washers and dryers, are they per building or per floor? Per building. Like so in the basement? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But it's not dark, it's not cobwebs, <laughs> it's not day. They don't have to take six people and form a chain to go to <laughs> In the freshman year experience buildings, by name, they're all freshmen. There are freshmen in the other buildings. I don't call them upper class buildings because there is a mix. But in the halls that are freshman year experience, 99% of the time they are all freshmen. But they are mixed throughout the other halls. Um, the built-in storage in the bedrooms, uh, is there anything with a locking key? Or do you have no, we don't have anything with the locking key. I know some places have small safes in them and things like that, but we don't. Okay. Um, My son is coming in as a sophomore. Mm -hmm. um, do you think the same way when you go into our living room? Um, actually, see, you're getting this. But I don't need to tell people. <laughs> um, this year, we're going to have a floor for transfer students, which is kind of nice because they'll be surrounded by people who are going through the same experience that they are. So it's not a freshman year experience that way, but he will be around other freshmen. Um, back there. Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. In all the dorms? Yes. Uh, so when July, when they find out their housing assignment, will they get the name and email of their roommates so they can Yes, they will, so that they can call, they can chat, they can start that bonding process, that will lead them 50 years down um, history where they'll be sitting on a porch in Maine watching the honey flow from the San Francisco. Do you remember the time when we did so and so at Millersville? <laughs> that starts the process. <laughs> so they'll get each other's information. Not necessarily. Yes, yeah, spread out. The question was her daughter is a basketball player. Would she be in a building with just with basketball players? No, she'd be spread out. The only intentional type of housing we have is this freshman year experience and our transfer students, that type of thing. I saw another hand. Okay, I guess I did. So we're this way. Yes. The kitchen's downstairs. Are they open all hours? And they have to get a key to go into the kitchen. We don't leave it, but we kind of like to try to monitor it. And normally at midnight is when the kitchen is closed, because that's when the office closes. And we don't want people downstairs who really can't cook, try to fry up stuff, and <laughs> cause all sorts of trouble. <laughs> um, it's the staff's responsibility to go down before the student leaves to see that the kitchen is in the state it was in when they let them into the room. Yeah, that was my question. Oh, okay. <laughs> what about hanging? Say, what, like, what's your policy about anything on the walls? So. Can we all agree that they shouldn't hang something? <laughs> <laughs> I say they have a lot of great products out there, 3M and other products now to use, because if they don't and they pull the paint off, they're going to be charged for it. Is it paint or is it cement? Yes. We have paint. It's paint. Is there ever a chance for 
freshmen with each other? I will say, I will not say there will never be a chance at this point so far this year, that's not on the horizon. As of today, it, the question was, is there a chance the freshmen would be tripled? And I said, as of today, that hasn't even been a thought in my head this summer or on the horizon that we were. Not to say that that's not possible. It happened a few years ago. And those that we tripled, within a week and a half, we had them all untripled. And we take the responsibility of moving them into their new room so that you don't come, have to come back to do it. But at this point, no. It was mentioned to me that there would be a hall for honors college students. But yes, it's Dean Hall. Mentioned. What? Dean Hall. That is where the honors students are at. That's on this side of campus. Other questions? Yes. Bio students, you mentioned they're also housed together. They were last year. We had biology students that were up in Gage. I don't know where they would be placed or if that department decided that they wanted to do that again or not. When will we find that out? Um, when they receive their assignments. <laughs> okay. And if they're in bio and that happens, it's automatic? They don't choose? Yes, if it's automatic. But clearly, if your student does not want to be, they don't want to be around bio majors because they figure, you know what? around too many people like me and I want to go over a building where there's some music people <laughs> then when our two week period oh I need a um, thing uh, a raffle ticket because you're causing me to remember something else here that I want to mention so I think you ought to have a team you want a prize you can send it back to me thank you thank you now we talked about how the assignments and they will be out for a few they'll be out for a few weeks Here's what happened. From the point that students get their assignments until two weeks after the semester starts, we have what's called a freeze. And we do a freeze two times a year. We do it in August when they come in, and then we do it again in January. That's so we can make sure that everybody who's supposed to be here is here. And for those who have withdrawn that perhaps, you know, snuck away in the night, we can track them down and then have those rooms open. So there are only two times during the year that your student cannot move for a limited amount of time. After that two weeks is open, they can go every day, I wouldn't suggest it, but they can go every day move into a building and decide they want to go to a building across campus and go move again. We won't stop. They can go like free range chickens. <laughs> I'm moving, but hey, if they want to, you don't suggest we don't recommend it, but they can. But when they first come in, we do have that freeze. Now, as I said, if your son, if your students are in a place where, you know, it's just not vibrant and working, we will work with them and work that out. We don't want anybody to be here unhappy. Because when they're unhappy, the staff gets unhappy, and then they make me unhappy. So I want everybody to be happy. So when the students, like, sign up for housing and with the agreement, do they choose the dorm, the halls that they pick, mm -hmm. or like? They can choose from what's open and available. If we have, say, if you go online and you look and you see Hobbs Hall, and you think, I'd like to live at Hobbs. Well, if Hobbs is already filled, that's not going to be able, uh, one of your options that you'll be able to pick. I, I just wasn't sure if like the school assigned them to halls close to, like, like my son's going to be an engineer. So uh, we, have, we haven't figured how to map that one out yet for the computer. <laughs> So the students usually go on and look for the halls closest to where they're going to be um, taking classes. And then they could, they find, you know, it amazes me, they can find that out real quick. You know, which building is going to give me the least amount of steps that I could fall out of bed five minutes before class. But they can't find out other things. I wonder why that is. <laughs> other one is if they are in a learning community 
They may be placed in a learning community as opposed to being a roommate with your student, which is why I said after the first two weeks, we will work with people and move them around. Okay? Other questions? Yeah. I, okay. I would imagine, I, I, if they come to orientation, yes. And most people do go to orientation, some don't, and then they'll come in any time between that Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday. If they're placed in a learning community, can they still move? Yes, that's what I'm saying. After that time period, we will work with them to get them moved. What's the assignments are given out? Did you send the students uh, the names and yes. numbers so that they can yeah, That's where I was talking to the lady. That's where we start our, our, our relationship with growing old together. We start by sending out everybody their information so that they can decide if they want red bed, um, bed blankets or blue curtains or who's going to get the micro fridge or are we going to have bunk beds or not, all that kind of stuff. And that information will come in with their assignment. Um, if, if, a group, if a building was selected, but they possibly I would say call into the housing office on Monday morning and explain to the housing coordinator exactly what your circumstances are and she can tell you how to proceed from there. With the house agreement electronically signed or is that something you download, print, sign, send? No, they click on it when they go into the account. It's just a quick little click. Other questions? We do not have that here. Ours is very limited. It, at this point in this year, it's uh, more about healthy. It's about the smoking. Okay. So we, I know some schools have a five-tone thing that <laughs> they, they go through to match up roommates and things like that. We, unfortunately, or, or maybe not, we don't have that here. Um, the thing that they're able to say or not is if Yes or no, they want to be in with a smoker. Because even though there's no smoking in the halls, there are some students that can't even be around the smoke of people's clothes. So that's what we're limited to at this point, right now at this point. But it is something that we are researching and looking into. We're looking at different schools. We don't want it to be too long and extensive. Um, we're looking at something, trying to develop something that's along the lines of like 20 questions as opposed to having to take three hours <laughs> to finish. Are the students allowed to smoke on campus? Outside of the buildings, not in the halls. Uh, besides the bed option, mm -hmm. the beds, they're capable of being elevated? Yeah, on risers. So they and they can get risers from Kmart. Okay. To put them on if they agree to that. Because I, would, I don't like heights. I don't like to stand on my tiptoes. I don't want to get whiz it up. They can get them from Kmart. <laughs> Are there rooms bigger than other? Are some rooms bigger than other rooms? We have three in the room, or, or, or not? Or just... If we have people in a quad or a triple, then yes, those rooms are bigger. They're designed for three or four. Other questions? My job's done. <laughs> Perfect timing. <company. laughs> I know. See, and you wouldn't allow me to leave with that illusion. Uh, anyway, so thank you all very much for your attention. I appreciate